So very good day to everybody. This is data structures and in today's class we discuss about efficiency and complexity of data structures. Then we'll discuss about uh, the measures that are needed to actually <coughs> find out or maybe see the performance. Then we'll discuss about a very important topic which is big O notation. Okay, this is very very important. Okay. So this is especially for you my dear students and young researchers and you can reach me at e.adalkristronan at the rate of gmail.com. So before beginning the session, once again, let me thank God for giving me this opportunity to deliver this useful session to share my knowledge among my fellow national, international participants, students and young researchers. So in this class, we'll discuss about the various time complexities of several data structures. Then we discuss about worst case time complexity of different data structures for of the different operations. Then we try to understand this time complexity with some relevant examples. Then we try to measure the run time, the execution time or maybe the time complexity of the algorithm. Then the second part of today's class, we will discuss about big O notation. What is this real life big O? So that we will be discussing. Okay. Then we discuss about worst case scenario and its complexity explanation. Okay. Then uh, we will discuss about the order of n square quadratic uh, time approach the space complexity and of course the code for the order of log in logarithmic time. So at regular intervals, I'll be giving you some short videos to discuss the knowledge in our topic. Right. So time complexity, of course, you know, in the data structures, you have both time complexity and space complexity. Okay. So time complexity, of course, it's a very important concept in computer science that deals with the quantification of the amount of time that is actually taken by the code or maybe the algorithm in order to execute, in order to process, in order to run as the function of the amount of the input. So time complexity is nothing but the time that is actually taken. Okay, the time taken for the program to process the given input. Okay, so the efficiency will be having two parameters, time complexity, space complexity. So maybe in the interview also they will ask, what is the time complexity of shell sort algorithm? What is the space complexity of binary research? What is the time complexity of linear research? Okay, what is the time complexity of bubble sort? So they will be asking questions. You should be able to answer them. So time complexity is defined as the number of times a particular instruction set is actually executed rather than the total time which is actually taken. Okay, so it is because the total time also depends on the compiler which is being used the processor speed and so on then you have space complexity of course you know it's the total memory space which is required by the program for the execution for the running okay so it's nothing but the total space that is actually required okay so we'll consider the average time complexity of different data structures for different operations for example here we have array stack queue singly linked list doubly linked list we have different data structures we'll C one by one. Okay, so for array for accessing it is order of one. Search operation it is order of n. Insertion and deletion order of n. So order of n means it is going to take n amount of time in order to insert n amount of time for deleting. Okay, right. Then stack. Stack access order of n. Search order of n. But insertion and deletion best case order of one. Okay. Q order of n. Uh, search also order of n insertion and deletion best case order of one singly linked list order of n order of n and insertion deletion order of one okay doubly linked list order of n order of n insertion deletion best case hash table best case so order of one for all of the cases okay binary search tree order of login for all of the cases okay avl tree order of login for all of the cases b tree order of login for all of the cases red black tree order of login for all of the cases so you should know about this one okay what is the order what is the time complexity what is the space complexity okay so this avl tree is nothing but the adelson welski and landis tree okay so we have the worst case complexity of different data structures for different operations okay so the array order of one okay search insertion and deletion order of n stack order of n order of n insertion and deletion best case um q order of n order of n 
order of one order of one. okay single linked list also the same hash table it is order of n for all of the operations and then binary search tree order of n for all of the operations avl tree order of log n for all of the cases binary tree order of n for all of the cases so you should know about this what is the best case what is the average case what is the worst case you should know about this so let us consider an example okay we will try to understand time complexity let us consider a classroom it has 100 students and you gave your pin maybe to one person okay now you want that particular pin okay so here are the ways that you can find the pin and maybe you can find what order it is okay so order of n square order of one n square means you go and ask the first person in the class if he has the pen also you ask next one next one next one so it goes on till you find 99 people in the uh, classroom whether they have the pen or not so this is one way order of n square okay order of n going and asking each student individually you have the pen you have the pen so order of n order of log n you divide the class into two groups left side or right side for example like uh, uh, Aziz is having the pen left side right side this side left side this side right side okay you divide okay right so then I take that group again divided into two this side this side left side right side okay so again you repeat 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 until you find that particular person so this is order of login I might need to do this order of n square if only one student knows on which student the pen is hidden for example like uh, you know that person okay like uh, Aziz is uh, hiding the pen okay so that is order of n square so we we prefer to go for order of n square because you will know who is actually having the pen okay right so i'd use order of n if maybe one student had the pen okay and only they knew it for example aziz has the pen and only he knew he knows it nobody else knows it okay so this is you can follow order of n approach or maybe you can go for order of n square approach if you know that he has the pen. If Muzabek knows Aziz has the pen, order of n square. If he knows, he, he only knows that he has the pen, then order of n. Okay. So I'd also use order of login if all the students know who has the pen, but would only tell me if I guess the right side. For example, you have the pen? He says, no, but he knows he has the pen. But I'm, I'm asking, you, you have the pen? He says, no. You have the pen? Now he says, yes, I have the pen. So that is order of login. So depending on the approach, you try to use it. Okay. So time complexity of the algorithm or maybe code is not equal to the actual time required to execute that particular code. Okay. But the number of times the statement is actually going to execute. So we can use it by the time command. For example, write code in maybe C programming or maybe C++ programming in order to find the maximum of n numbers where n varies from 10, 100, 1000, 10,000 and so on and maybe you compile that code on the Linux based operating system maybe Fedora or maybe Ubuntu platform maybe you'll go for dot I mean gcc dot c o hyphen o program run it with the time dot slash program okay and you will get the results for n is equal to 10 which means that within 0.5 millisecond for n is equal to 10,000 you uh, maybe you will have for example n is equal to 10 means you will get it in 0.5 millisecond and for n is equal to 10,000 you will get 0.2 millisecond so that is the time it is actually taken okay so that depends on the different time itself. so we can say that this actual time required to execute this particular code is dependent on the machine okay whether you are using pentium 1 processor or maybe pentium 5 processor and maybe you can also consider the network load even okay maybe if your machine is using local local area network or maybe wide area network so that depends okay even you will not get the same timings on the same machine for the same code okay the reason is the current workload okay maybe what one time workload is not much or may, maybe other time workload is much so different timings you will get so instead of measuring the actual time required in executing each statement in the code, we consider how many times each statement is going to execute. So based on that, you will try to find out. So for example, hash include stdio.h, int main, 
print f hello world so that it will be printing hello world so here hello world is going to print only once in the script so the time complexity is constant order of one so every time the constant amount of time required to execute the code no matter which operating system or which machine configurations you are actually using so let us consider the pseudo code sum of a comma b return a plus b so this one it is going to take two unit of time a constant time one for arithmetic operation and one for return okay right so cost is equal to two number of times is equal to one okay so t sum is equal to two okay which is equal to the cost the complexity is order of one okay then you will have the sum of all elements in the list so list sum a array and then n number of elements in the array the total is equal to zero so here you initialize cost is equal to one number of times is equal to one then you will have the for row for i equal to zero to n minus one cost is equal to two number of times is equal to again you try to go for increment okay n plus one so it will be plus one for the false condition so sum is equal to sum plus a of i so cost is equal to two number of times is equal to n return sum so one once again you will have cost equal to one number of times is equal to one okay so t sum is equal to you will have the function one plus two of n minus n plus one plus two n plus one so it will be one uh, this one okay two n plus two again two n uh, that it will become four n plus four okay so that will be equal to c n c one of n this is c one okay plus c2 okay which is equal to order of n then you will have a uh, sum of all elements of the matrix for this one the uh, complexity is the polynomial equation so matrix the of n cross n is equal to t sum it is of the quadratic equation a n square plus b n plus c okay so for this one uh, the t sum if it is in the order that would be n square is equal to order of n square so this does not work in the uh, integrated development environment as they are pseudo codes and do not resemble any of the programming language so we can conclude that the time of execution is going to increase with the time of operations that we are going to make using the inputs so this one you can call it as a big o notation or maybe asymptotic notation so maybe like you will have like theta notation ohm notation and so on so how you are going to compare the algorithms so if you can say okay this algorithm is best this algorithm is worst how you say based on the time it is going to take and how efficient it is okay so execution times okay it's not a good measure as the execution times are specific to that particular computer okay. it might vary okay. and the number of statements which are executed again it's a not a good measure because the number of statements varies with the programming language for example in c programming okay like uh, it will be less maybe maybe in other programming language maybe dos whatever maybe uh, it will be very large okay so that depends okay depends on the style of the individual program the same program you can write it small you can also write it big so that execution time uh, for this it will be small for this it will be large so you cannot say this algorithm is worst not like that okay ideal solution so we assume that we express the uh, running time of the given algorithm as the function of the input size so that is explicitly uh, de uh, defined as a function of n and you try to compare different functions corresponding to the running times so the kind of comparison is independent of the machine time independent of the programming style and so on and you measure the run time or maybe the time complexity of the algorithm so maybe different hardware different processor you know speed as well is going to affect the total runtime of the algorithm so instead of talking about runtime directly we use big o notation okay to quickly understand that the runtime is going to grow when the given input or maybe the data is given to that particular algorithm so that maybe when the input is going to increase then definitely the runtime is also going to increase okay so we'll understand the real life big o notation okay like uh, the run time maybe it is expressed in terms of seconds but how we actually measure the growth of the run time so since we are actually measuring how quickly our run time is going to grow we need to measure the speed 
okay in terms of something okay so in big o the size of the input data which we denote it as n okay and o is nothing but the order so order of n okay order of the input order of the data okay. so in real life okay like when analyzing the algorithms or maybe operations we often consider the worst case scenario what's worst that can happen to our algorithm as well and when does our algorithm perform you know high heavy tasks complicated tasks so let us take in the case you have a cabinet full of files you have many tasks maybe like finding files getting rid of duplicates copy things you have to take into okay so you also know that if uh, want to know that uh, if there are more files in the cabinet definitely it will take much more time to uh, complete the task okay assume we have to perform some of the tasks mentioned above like uh, maybe uh, finding the files or maybe avoiding the copy once duplicates you have to throw them okay so here are the scenarios and maybe ways in which we can find the file from the cabinet and their corresponding order of notation okay so here we'll be having order of n okay linear time okay so let us take in the case we want to find a particular file in the cabinet but the files stored in the cabinet are not in the arrangement maybe not in the alphabetical order or maybe not sorted okay so how can we search a file okay so we have to look into each and every file as i, as I told you beginning in the class order of n means what you see you have to look you have the pen you have the pen you have the pen i have to check for everybody okay so that is how you are going to look for each file present in the cabinet and maybe we can find our file okay so here you will be having the code function search for file files array and file name so we loop through every file that we find that what we are searching for okay so far let i equal to 0 i less than files array dot length i plus plus so if this files array of i is equal to that file name then return true okay then the name of the files present in the cabinet you will have abra snitch falana dinkana you will have all the files okay then search for the file within the files array snitch okay right so that is how you will go for. Okay. so even in the worst case also we will look for n files so n is nothing but the highest number of files present in the cabinets okay so maybe for searching one element among the 10 elements okay so the number of steps is directly related to your input size if size is 10 means then 10 times you have to search okay so means that if the cabinet has 10 files we have to look all the 10 files till we find a file in the worst case scenario okay so hence we say that the runtime of the above algorithm grows on the order of the size of the input so which is nothing but order of n. so it is actually single for loops uh, linear search are example of the linear time so we'll have the constant time okay we'll uh, have the scenario or maybe problem you need a file and remember exact location where you had kept that file okay so what you do you try to open the cabinet pick the file from the location that's it okay so function search for file files array file name return files array of one then the name of files files of uh, files array abra the snitch falana dinkana so search file of file files array the snitch so you're going to pick open the cabinet pick the file that's it so the above method runs in order of one time relative to its input okay so the input array could be like one item or maybe it can be thousand items okay but since we know where that particular file that location we know for example uh, uh mozovic is uh, uh, sitting in the second row uh third third one okay we, i know the location and immediately musopic please help me to get the wi-fi so immediately i can i can tell directly and maybe it is executed within order of one time if i don't know musopic i'm standing there sitting like this i don't know then i have to search until i i find musopic and get what i want okay right so that is how you advantage of finding the location okay so picking element by the array index is a very good example of the constant time okay then you have order of n square okay quadratic time so the scenario is you have duplicate files in the cabinet and you have to remove them okay but you do not know how many duplicate copies are actually present 
in that file in the cabinet okay so we have to pick the first file check it with all other files then again file to check it file 3 like this you have to go for until you go to the last file so function remove duplicate of file array okay for let i equal to 0 i less than file array dot length i plus plus then again for let j equal to i plus 1 j less than file array dot length j plus plus if this file array of i you are going to compare with file array of j then variable index is equal to file array dot index of file array of i so if this index is greater than minus 1 means then file array dot splice index and 1 okay then close them return file array so this is the thing while array you have abra snitch abra falana dinkana you see like abra has been repeated two times okay so remove duplicates of file array that's all so that one it will be returning the file array without any duplicate so in the worst case scenario we have to go for n square number of times comparing each and every file with others so each pass to that outer uh, loop order of n requires going through the entire array through the inner loop which is another order of n operation so nested loops is a very good example of the quadratic time complexity okay then you have order of log in logarithmic time so we have the scenario or maybe the problem the files in the cabinet are already in the arranged order okay so we have to search for a file mark with the label okay right so the approach is we can start in the middle okay so see which half should be in, left half or right half again okay then you divide again left half or right half okay again two of two persons are there left half right half so that is how you are going to go for order of login and you have to repeat the steps until we found the file function search for file array file number okay so variable midpoint is equal to math dot floor array dot length divided by two so if this array of midpoint is equal to file number then return to if array of midpoint is lesser than file number then next one greater than file number okay close it down file label array 10 20 30 40 so search for the file file label array 30 okay so you are going to find that particular location so maybe we assume that the files were ordinary uh, already in the order okay so when our files were not ordered then we have to search for each and every element which again takes the order of n time complexity but since our files are ordered so here given an input of size n the number of steps that is actually taken to accomplish the task are, are decreased by 50 percentage of the time for the algorithm so that is the advantage so order of login algorithms are much more efficient because increasing amount of data has very less effect at some point because the amount of data is actually halved for each of the execution okay so recursive algorithm like maybe binary search is a very good example of the uh, logarithmic complexity can we go through some practice questions so this is one particular example okay like uh, int a equal to 0 b equal to 0 so we have the code okay for i equal to 0 i less than n i plus plus a is equal to a plus random for j equal to 0 j less than n j plus plus b equal to b plus random so here what is the time complexity and space complexity of this code okay so here you will have order of n star m time order of one space order of n plus m time n plus m space n plus m time one space n star m time n plus m space okay so it's nothing but n plus m time order of one space the reason is first loop is actually order of n second loop is order of m so we do not know which is actually bigger so maybe we will say order of n plus m so or you can also write it as order of max of n comma m okay so since no additional space is required so which means that you are, you are going for the best case so order of one space then what is the time complexity of this one okay like int a equal to 0 for i equal to 0 i less than n i plus plus for again for j equal to n j greater than i j minus minus so a is equal to a plus i plus j so here we will be having the time complexity options order of n n multiplied by log n n multiplied by square root of n n multiplied by n okay 
so it is nothing but n multiplied by n because it's actually a recursive relation okay n plus n minus 1 plus n minus 2 plus n minus 3 okay up to like minus 1 uh, sorry not minus 1, plus 1 plus 0 okay so it is actually this one you have the formula okay n plus n minus 1 plus n minus 2 you can also give it as n multiply by n plus 1 by 2 okay so 1 by 2 it's nothing multiply by n by 2 plus 1 by 2 multiply by n so you can say that everything you see uh, it's n square so it is going to take recursively order of n square number of times so what is the time complexity of this one okay so i j k equal to 0 i equal to n by 2 for i uh, less than or equal to n i plus plus then for j equal to 2 j less than or equal to n j equal to j multiply by 2 so here you will be having k plus uh, k k equal to k plus n by 2 okay so what is the time complexity of this one order of n n log n n square n square log n okay right so it's actually order of n log n because j if you can see here okay it is going to double because j multiply by 2 okay so that is going to double okay till it is actually less than or equal to n so several times we can double the number till it is lesser than n okay so we'll have the examples like uh, uh, n is equal to 16 so which means that j is equal to 2 4 8 16 n is equal to 32 means 2 4 8 16 32 so until is it is lesser or equal to n it will be having doubling okay so j would run order of log n uh, log logarithmic of n so because we are dividing 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 until we find out okay so i runs for n by 2 number of steps so that is the reason the total steps would be order of n divided by 2 log n or maybe it is actually order of n log n.